at the impeachment of a president who is not president. They are claiming that what happened was an insurrection. It's a gigantic lie. Okay. All right. First, I guess, unarmed insurrection where people take selfies at the desks of people they oppose politically. It's the selfie insurrection. All right. So that's the first lie. It's based on that. If it wasn't an insurrection, then there's there's nothing to really talk about. The the second is that the president incited the insurrection, even though they can produce the only thing they could produce is he says you got to fight for what you believe. As everybody knows, that incites riots. The Democrats never say fight for what we stand for. And it, it just continues along those lines. Third, they equate believing that the election was illegitimate with treason and uh, and being an insurrectionist and so on. I don't, I don't care what you believe. I don't care what my side believes or your side believes. I care the way people act. How many Democrats believe that the election was not uh, was not stolen from Hillary Clinton? The whole point of the Russian collusion lie was to prove that it was an illegitimate election. Putin won. Remember Putin, not Trump. Telling all Americans over and over and over police are racist does not lead to fatal riots. The burning down of businesses and, and police cars, that, that does not lead to that. The, this is a cover-up for the violence of the left. That's the way it should be regarded. I wish we had the male-female hour today. I apologize to you. I apologize to me. I apologize to males and females listening. I cannot control the events outside. I can only control how I react. And this is a time of crisis wherein my normal programming is deferred. I would love to have had a male-female hour today. I debated it to the last minute, actually. The vote was won to have regular programming 60-40. 40% of me wishes that I, well, 100% of me wishes I had done it, but 40% of me is not sure that I made the right decision. 60% is. Those of you listening in Dallas, are you aware of this? This is from CBS News. I just learned of this last night. Mark Cuban, has Mavericks become... That's the basketball team. First NBA team to cease playing national anthem before games. Why was this not reported sooner? I I have to find out about this. If you're in Dallas, let me know if you knew about this and why all hell didn't break loose to uh, somehow get him out of uh, the Dallas Mavericks organization. This is a very bad thing. This is worse than Colin Kaepernick. Dallas Mavericks became the first NBA team and perhaps the first team in all of North American professional sports to cease playing the national anthem before games this season. Dallas has hosted 12 regular season games so far during the 2020-2021 season, along with a season a single preseason game, and the team didn't play the anthem before any of the contests. So when when did that begin, and why is the news only coming out now? I guess are there no fans that are aware of this? A source close to Mavericks owner Mark Cuban says the decision to not play the national anthem before games isn't because the franchise lacks love for the United States, but rather because many in the organization feel that the anthem, quote, doesn't represent them. What about the anthem 
is there not to be represented? Land of the free and home of the brave? Is that is that not rep- who doesn't that represent? Well, it doesn't represent the left. <laughs> I I guess that's true. Now that I think of it, it really it doesn't represent a good chunk of this country. Many in the organization feel that the anthem quote doesn't represent them. According to the Athletics Shams Sharania. I don't know what that is. Instead, the Mavericks reportedly want to explore other ways of representing people from all communities while also honoring the U.S. at games. Well, the breaking up of America into quote-unquote communities. It was my decision and I made it in November, Cuban said of the move, while declining further comment. There was no internal announcement about Dallas's decision, according to the Athletics' Tim Cato. Instead, team employees found out that the anthem wasn't being played when they realized it for themselves. That's a gutsy move on the part of Cuban. Doesn't take any questions and doesn't tell anybody he's going to do it. And people just realize it over time. The NBA's other 29 teams have found ways to play the anthem without necessarily having a singer in the building, largely by using recordings, but the league itself has permitted the choice not to play it at all. Another reason to avoid the NBA. Under the unique circumstances of the season, teams are permitted to run their pregame operations as they see fit, a league spokesman told The Athletic. Interestingly enough, this actually isn't the first time in Mavericks franchise history that the team has opted against playing the national anthem. This is from a writer in the New York Times. For the club's first 16 years of existence when it was owned by Donald Carter, God Bless America was sung instead before home games at the old Reunion Arena. The Mavericks began playing the national anthem after the team was purchased by Ross Perot, In 1996, Cuban bought the Mavericks in January 2000. League rules state that players must stand for the national anthem, but those rules have not been strictly enforced in recent years. Players on every team in the Orlando bubble knelt for the anthem when the season resumed last summer. Mark Cuban supported the decision, and the league as a whole to use the Disney bubble to promote the social justice messaging such protests inspired. The Mavs have not offered comment on their long-term plans, but for the time being, the anthem will continue to be not to be played at home games in Dallas. So you can add Mark Cuban to the roster of those bit by bit undoing America. That's all. That's the only way. Who doesn't it represent? Who does the national anthem not represent? That's what I'd like to know. Well, they they don't believe the nation is a nation. That the, there is no for, for the left and and destructive forces like Cuban. By the way, he's invited onto the show. They never come on. Leftists don't uh, debate, and I am as civil a debater as exists. My next fireside chat, I very rarely do this, maybe once in 50 fireside chats I have a guest, but I'm going to have a prominent atheist on, and he knows uh, how civil I will be. Mark Cuban wouldn't come on. He He wouldn't debate. So there has to be a way to uh, make his franchise lose as much money as possible. And that would mean never watching a Mavericks game on TV and not going to games. To ask you to give up your season tickets is, I realize, asking a lot, so I'm not even saying that. But you should consider it. 